Interestingly enough, it seems that as crazy as the American political scene has been, it got even crazier this week. The latest topic of conversation, debate, and discussion seems to be who can use what bathroom. It started when a bill was passed in North Carolina, and this conversation has worked its way into the presidential campaigns in the United States as well. Now, I know this may seem kind of silly to some people, but I think that there's something in this conversation that affects our faith life, and I want to talk about that. Namely, it's, is there or is there not such a thing as objective reality? It seems that more and more what we see promoted is this notion that reality is what you as an individual subject determine it to be. There is no objective truth. Everything is subjective. Now, this ironically flies in the faith, not face not only of people of faith, but also of certain atheists, namely those who would practice something called scientism. And by scientism, I mean this notion that the only thing that we can know is that which science proves to be true. And I say this because both parties, people of faith and people practicing scientism, contend that there is such a thing as objective truth, that there is something that we can know. Science, after all, would be worthless if we believed that we couldn't know anything. Um, so in order to get science off the ground, we have to start with this underlying belief, this underlying principle that the world is intelligible, that there are objective truths that we can, in fact, know and learn through scientific experimentation. Of course, religion is also going to hold that same claim that there are objective truths that we can know. Uh, for Catholics, we say we can know some of those truths, certainly through science, and then some through divine revelation as well. Now, the intent of this is not to determine whether or not we should hold to divine revelation. We'll table that conversation for another time. I'm speaking to people who I'm presuming already hold that there is in fact a God and that this God is the personal God of the Judeo-Christian tradition. Now, how does this bathroom question play into their lives? Well, first of all, I think there's a, a political way in which it could end up playing into their lives. Certainly, the question could be raised of how far can we carry subjective reality, where I get to determine what is and is not true. So, for example, can somebody like me, who is about to turn 40 in a couple of days, decide that I don't feel 40? <laughs> right now, I actually am beginning to feel the effects of my age. But, but that aside... Could I decide that I don't feel 40, I feel more 80? And therefore, I identify with people in their 80s. I tend to share same values with them, I have certain hobbies, perhaps. And therefore, I want to apply for Medicaid, Medicare, Social Security, and most importantly, retirement right now. I think most people would say that's kind of a silly extension of this subjective principle. But we've also seen it applied to race. For example, could somebody say that although genetically I am a white male, I grew up in a black neighborhood and therefore I sympathize and empathize with the black culture more, and so I identify myself as black and therefore should be able to receive affirmative action in the same way that any other black person were to receive it. You see, I think there's some important political questions here that we need to look at. But even moving beyond that, I think more importantly, there's religious questions. And namely, that is, is God objectively true, or is God something that I can subjectively determine what he's like and follow subjectively what I believe his rules should be, rather than perhaps what he's revealed his rules to be? And again, I want to start from the premise here of somebody who's accepting the Christian or the J.O. Christian faith. Um, we'll, we'll talk about the atheist question later, perhaps in another video. At, at issue here is this question of, is God real? Because if he is, I have to say, if I'm accepting him to be real, I have to say, then he must be like something. Um, that is, he, he must have certain characteristics and, and qualities, certain preferences, a certain way of being, a certain way of existing. And how do I come to know that? Of course, what the Judeo-Christian tradition has said throughout history is that God has revealed himself. And for Christians, we say God has revealed himself fully and even to the point of incarnating himself and becoming part of the world, became a human being so that we could know what he's like, that we could understand his ways, his laws, his statutes, his commandments. Yet so often when I encounter Catholics and Christians, what I hear is not somebody who says, 
I'm willing to accept God qua God or God as he's revealed himself to be. But more often than not, I hear people say, well, this is what I believe God is like without having any other recourse to any other evidence other than their own subjective opinion. And that, I contend, is dangerous. And I say it's dangerous because the goal of the Christian life is to share eternal life with God. And ultimately, that means that we need to enter into a relationship with God if we're sharing eternal life with him. We need to know what God is like and then conform our lives to being like God so that we can share eternal life with him. Yet, when we say that I think God is like in whatever opinion we want to hold without any kind of revelatory evidence, what we're ultimately saying is that God is determined by me as a subject, I, I subjectively determine what God is like. And the danger is that it can prevent us from entering into a true relationship with God. And I say that in all seriousness because in order to enter into a true relationship with God or with anyone for that matter, we have to know what that other is like. So for example, I can't enter into a relationship with you if I've predetermined what you're going to be like. If I've said, well, this is what this person is like, they must have these preferences, they don't have these preferences, this is their likes and dislikes, without ever confirming any of this with you or without allowing you to reveal yourself to me. To the extent that I do that, I'm entering a relationship with this false idol or this false image of you rather than you as you truly are. If I want to enter a relationship with you as you truly are, I have to listen to you and allow you to reveal yourself to me and then I can relate to you properly as you are. The same is true with God. If we want to enter a relationship with God, we have to allow God to reveal himself to us, which means that we have to put our subjective opinions and preferences, and mostly their preferences, aside and instead allow God to reveal himself as he truly is. When we do that, we'll begin to understand his laws, his commands, his statutes, and then we can enter into a true relationship with him as he truly is. And ultimately, the goal would be for us to share eternal life with him. So we would set aside our own subjective opinions about who I wish God were or who I wish he would reveal himself to be and instead accept who he has in fact revealed himself to be and then from there say, I can enter now into a true relationship with him because I'm, I'm accepting objectively who God is as opposed to subjectively who I wish God were. So when it comes to this issue of objective and subjective reality, I think there are some deeper implications than who can choose to use what bathroom. But I think there are implications that go to our relationships with one another and certainly our relationship with God.